With the successful completion of Starship's fifth integrated flight test, SpaceX is now moving rapidly toward its next mission, Flight 6. On October 24, just 11 days after Flight 5, Booster 13, the Super Heavy stage designated for Flight 6, completed its static fire testing on the orbital launch mount. Following this testing, Booster 13 was removed from the mount and returned to the production site for system checks and pre-launch preparations. In the coming days, engineers will make necessary adjustments to the booster's design and update its software based on the data collected during Flight 5, ensuring a seamless mission for Flight 6. Meanwhile, Starship 31, set to fly alongside Booster 13, is currently inside the high bay undergoing heat tile replacements. The team is nearing completion of this process, swapping out old tiles for new and improved ones designed to facilitate smooth re-entry and ocean splashdown. Future flights will further improve the heat tiles, using data collected from both Flight 5 and upcoming missions. With Booster 13's pre-launch testing complete and work on Ship 31 progressing well, SpaceX is on the verge of the Flight 6 launch. The only significant test remaining is the full-stack wet dress rehearsal, typically conducted one to two weeks before launch. Since SpaceX is not planning major changes to the launch vehicle or mission plans, the next launch will not require new FAA approval. The company already has permission from the agency to proceed with launches, as long as they adhere to the Flight 5 mission plans. In addition to the launch vehicles, the launch pad infrastructure is also being prepared for Flight 6. On Monday evening, teams conducted the first test of the tower arms after addressing minor damages and incorporating recommendations from Flight 5. The arms were raised to the top of the tower, fully opened, and then rapidly closed to simulate the booster catch sequences. Afterwards, they returned to the base of the tower, concluding the test. This operation was crucial to ensure that the arms and their actuators function at the necessary response time and precision for a successful booster recovery. Additionally, while booster 13 was off the launch mount, it was raised to the catch height and held there for several minutes before being lowered onto the transport stand. This test ensured that the upgrades and fixes made to the tower and arms after Flight 5 could adequately support the booster's full weight at the catch location, confirming readiness for future recovery operations. More catch practice tests with the launch tower arms are expected in the coming days as Flight 6 approaches. Given the current pace of work at Starbase, Flight 6 is anticipated to occur between mid and late November, assuming all proceeds smoothly. Interestingly, on October 25, Elon Musk posted a video clip on X, recorded during a gaming session, featuring audio of a discussion with a SpaceX engineer about critical moments from Flight 5. The conversation unveiled a potentially disastrous near-miss during the booster catch attempt. According to SpaceX personnel, Flight 5 Booster 12 came within a second of aborting its landing on the tower arms due to a misconfiguration in its spin pressure parameters, which control the booster's Raptor engine pressures during descent. If the spin pressure hadn't ramped up in time, the booster would have been directed to crash nearby instead of successfully landing. The incident highlighted the challenges posed by newly integrated abort and commit criteria. While the team had verified these criteria carefully, the engineers admitted they did not have enough time for thorough inspections before Flight 5. We had a misconfigured spin gas abort that didn't have quite the right ramp up time for bringing up spin pressure. And we were one second away from that tripping and telling the rocket to abort and try to crash into the ground next to the tower wow. instead of the tower. And wow. we knew we had a whole bunch of like new aborts and commit criteria that we like tried to double check really well. But like, I mean, I, I think our concern was well placed and one of these came very close to biting us. Musk noted that, despite the one second margin for abort, in rocket control terms, this was relatively manageable, equivalent to about 1000 milliseconds or roughly 50 control cycles. Additionally, the discussion revealed another issue. A chine cover dislodged during the booster's descent. Critically, this cover protected several single-point failure valves vital for the landing burn, leaving the hardware briefly exposed to potential damage. Fortunately, none of these components sustained harm, and the engineers plan to address this structural vulnerability in future flights. The conversation also pointed to preparations for Flight 6, with a shift in focus toward booster risk reduction rather than ship envelope expansion. Engineers emphasized the need for a balanced approach, aiming for a reasonable mix of risk reduction and rapid turnaround for the next flight tests, reflecting SpaceX's commitment to innovation while prioritizing safety. SpaceX recently began testing its next-generation Starship Block 2 vehicles. Let's quickly review what sets these Starship Block 2 prototypes apart from earlier versions before discussing the testing phase. 
The Starship Block 2 models integrate several key design and performance upgrades over previous iterations. Key design enhancements include redesigned forward flaps that have been repositioned for improved aerodynamic control and stability during re-entry, enabling the vehicle to better manage high-speed descent. Additional heat tiles provide enhanced thermal protection, shielding critical areas of the vehicle from extreme re-entry temperatures. Another notable upgrade is the relocated payload bay door, optimized to allow more versatile cargo configurations and smoother deployment of the Starlink satellites into orbit. The header tanks have been expanded to increase propellant capacity, which will enable more controlled landing burns and greater precision during landing. In addition, the Block 2 vehicles feature newly designed methane downcomers, which deliver liquid methane to the engines more efficiently, reducing the risk of fuel starvation during intense maneuvers or high thrust phases. The tank structure has also been refined, featuring flatter forward and common domes that create a more compact and streamlined fuel compartment. To enhance durability, SpaceX has strengthened the welds and introduced smaller, specially placed tiles to protect the most critical weld areas from re-entry heating. In terms of size, Block 2 Starships are 1.8 meters taller than Block 1 variants and feature larger propellant tanks, enabling them to carry additional fuel. These upgrades collectively yield substantial performance improvements. Block 2 Starships can carry larger payloads to orbit, and their increased thrust enhances the spacecraft's ability to reach higher altitudes or transport heavier cargo to desired destinations. For a deeper dive into each of these upgrades, check out my previous videos where I break down every new feature of Starship Block 2 in detail. Links are provided in the description. Ship 33, the first Starship prototype to integrate all Block 2 design upgrades, was moved to the Massey's test site on October 26 for evaluation. On Monday evening, it underwent an ambient pressure test using gaseous nitrogen. This test is designed to inspect the welds, joints, and overall structural integrity of the vehicle while minimizing stress by avoiding extreme cryogenic or high-pressure conditions. Following this, on Tuesday evening, a partial cryogenic proof test was conducted. During this phase, the vehicle's propellant tanks were partially filled with cryogenic liquid nitrogen. This controlled test environment allows engineers to validate the Starship's structural response under colder and more realistic operating conditions, but without fully loading the tanks. This reduces risk and allows engineers to assess specific parts of the vehicle before subjecting it to a full cryoproof test. Ship 33 was subjected to a full-scale cryoproof test on Wednesday afternoon. During this test, both the methane and oxygen tanks were filled to capacity with liquid nitrogen and the vehicle was held in this state for over three hours. Meanwhile, six hydraulic rams on the test stand applied force to the aft section of the ship, simulating the thrust of six Raptor engines. These images from Starship Gazer clearly highlight the taller structure and expanded propellant tank capacity of the Block 2 ship compared to the previous Block 1 design. This comprehensive cryoproof test not only ensures the reliability of the plumbing but also provides engineers with the valuable data they need to assess the ship's ability to withstand various flight stresses and detect potential leaks in its structure. Ship 33 is set to return to the build site as early as November 1st. Once at the build site, the vehicle will receive its engines ahead of the static fire testing. It's still uncertain whether Ship 33 will be fitted with SpaceX's latest Raptor V3 engines, which are currently undergoing testing at the McGregor facility in Texas. Ship 33 has been assigned for the 7th integrated flight test alongside Booster 14, with a launch anticipated in early 2025. The construction of the second orbital launch pad is progressing swiftly at a launch site. The flame trench construction is advancing smoothly, with rebar placement underway for the trench walls, while excavation continues to shape the trench. Recently delivered parts at the Sanchez site indicate that SpaceX will implement a double bucket flame trench for Pad B. This design features two pathways for exhaust gas to escape, efficiently dispersing the intense heat and pressure generated during Starship liftoff, thereby reducing thermal and acoustic stress on both the launch structure and the vehicle. The Pad B orbital launch mount is under construction at Sanchez. Teams have begun assembling the second layer of the launch mount over the base structure. This layer incorporates 20 booster quick disconnect mechanisms designed to supply high-pressure gases to the engine preburners, initiating the spin-up of their turbo pumps for startup. The top deck of the launch mount will house a water deluge system that releases large volumes of water onto the launch pad just before ignition. 
This system absorbs intense heat and mitigates the loud noise produced during liftoff, offering significant improvements over the existing water-cooled steel plates by providing more uniform cooling and enhanced sound suppression. Components for the Pad B Booster Quick Disconnect Mechanism have also started arriving at the build site. The launch tower arms, carriage, and ship quick disconnect arm parts are already at the Sanchez site and are being prepared for installation. However, visuals of the booster and ship quick disconnect panels are still pending. These elements are crucial for facilitating the flow of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the rocket until liftoff, and they are expected to incorporate design enhancements compared to those installed on Pad A. After completing initial inspections and system checks following Flight 5, Super Heavy Booster 12 was moved to the Rocket Garden earlier this week. The insights gained from the thorough examination of this flight-proven booster will help engineers identify specific areas for improvement, resulting in enhancements to the design and materials of future boosters. Elon Musk previously announced that several engines from Booster 12 will be transported to SpaceX's McGregor test facility for rigorous analysis. Testing engines after a real-world flight provides invaluable insights that ground tests cannot offer, as it allows engineers to evaluate how components endure the full spectrum of stresses experienced during a mission, including high temperatures and rapid pressure changes. This post-flight analysis reveals early signs of wear or thermal fatigue, enhancing engine reliability and reusability for future missions. Speaking at the Future Investment Initiative Conference in Saudi Arabia, Elon Musk outlined SpaceX's revised plans for Mars exploration. Here's what Musk revealed at the conference. When is uh, this Starship on Mars? In just over two years, we'll be sending our first uncrewed Starships to Mars. And then if those, if those work out well, and we, we don't increment the crater count on Mars, then we'll send humans uh, two years out of that. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. China launched the Shenzhou-19 astronaut mission to the Tiangan Space Station on October 30th atop a Long March 2F rocket, marking a significant milestone in the country's ongoing efforts to expand its presence in space. The Shenzhou-19 crew includes three astronauts, each with unique backgrounds and skills. Kai Zhuzh, the mission commander, is a 48-year-old veteran who previously flew on the Shenzhou-14 mission. During that mission, he spent 182 days in orbit and conducted multiple spacewalks, demonstrating his extensive experience in human spaceflight. Joining him are Song Lingdong and Wang Heios, both on their first mission. Song, a former Air Force pilot, brings valuable aviation expertise, while Wang, a spaceflight engineer, holds the distinction of being China's first civilian female astronaut. Approximately 10 minutes after liftoff, Shenzhou-19 separated from the rocket's upper stage and began its journey to Tiangon. About six and a half hours later, the spacecraft docked with the station, demonstrating China's advanced autonomous docking technology. Following a successful docking procedure, the hatch was opened, and the crew joined the existing Shenzhou-18 astronauts, who have been aboard Tiangon since April 2024. The Shenzhou-18 team is scheduled to return to Earth around November 3rd after officially handing over operations to Shenzhou-19 crew members. During their six-month mission, the Shenzhou-19 crew will conduct a variety of scientific experiments, focusing on biological and physical sciences in the microgravity environment. They will also perform multiple spacewalks, which are expected to involve tasks like installing protective measures against space debris and maintaining equipment outside the station. As per reports, China has plans to expand the Tiangong space station in the near future to extend its scale of operations and to accommodate international cooperation in scientific research. The three-module T-shaped Tiangong space station was fully assembled in November 2022, and additional modules are expected to enhance its capabilities and support more extensive scientific endeavors. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.